Okay, um, not really completely sure where to even begin with this video. I have a ton of information, and uh, I might not even put it all in here. But uh, anyway, I was thinking about Lupercalia, and Lupercalia is from February 13th through the 15th, so 13th, 14th, 15th. And I've talked about Valentine's Day and Lupercalia and all that, and Michael Jordan, how it all kind of ties in together here. Um, and they kind of meshed like Back to the Future, uh, Teen Wolf, and Space Jam. They've, they've kind of like meshed these stories together. But uh, anyway, I was thinking it's probably started in 2013. All of these uh, subliminals and whatnot, they're building it up. And we just never know. I just never noticed it until now. But this is why, like 2013 is 2.13, 2014 could be 2.14, 2015, 2.15. So this is basically like the last year of their uh, Lupercalia. So then with the whole Mesa shooting and the previous videos I made where Obama was actually 4.4 miles away in 2009 from uh, that whole Mesa thing and a bunch of other stuff. With Michael, it was the same day Michael Jordan came out of, uh, announced his retirement or whatever, coming out of retirement to wear 45, which is Valentine's Day. So I thought, huh, I wonder where Michael Jordan and Obama were on Valentine's Day. And so I looked it up. Obama was actually playing golf. And that reminds me of Space Jam, because when Michael Jordan goes to the Toon Land, he hits a hole in one, and then they suck him in the hole or whatever. So he was golfing with Bill Murray and Larry Bird. Um, but Obama hasn't been with Michelle Obama for the last two Valentines. So this was this year he went golfing, and the year before he went to um, California and he celebrated Valentine's Day with the president or the King Abdullah the Second of Jordan. I mean, what are the odds of this? Michael Jordan. I've talked about with Valentine's Day like crazy, and in 2014, Obama went to California and ate dinner and had a meeting with the King of Jordan. I mean, really. And then I looked up Michael Jordan and what he was doing on Valentine's Day this year, and he was actually at. A Prince concert on Valentine's Day. Michael Jordan, Chris Rock, all kinds of people like here. Jo Jay-Z and Beyonce, I mean, and Michael Jordan. W really? That's pretty messed up. Um, so Michael Jordan was at the Prince concert. Look where it took place. The outside of 23 Wall Street was a bit chaotic. I mean, 23, Michael Jordan. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. Also... Jordan has a shoe called, it's like the Valentine shoe, and it was the 30th anniversary of that shoe. So then when I was sitting at work, I thought, man, what does Michael Jordan and Obama really, what do they have in common? And the first thing I thought of, Chicago. They're both like icons of Chicago. Obama was the senator of Illinois, and then um, you have Michael Jordan, the Bulls. Uh, anyway, so I looked, I thought of Chicago, and then I thought of uh, back to the future again, because Chicago Cubs are predicted to go to the World Series in 2015 to play the Miami Marlins. So I thought I'd look up the last time that the Cubs actually won or went to the World Series. So the last time that the Cubs won the World Series was in 1908. Um, and they've been to World Series since then, but 1908 was the last time that they won the World Series. Okay, so I just kind of want to uh, look through some of these players here. Uh, the Hall of Famers of the Cubs from the 1908, the last time they won the World Series. First guy is Mordecai Brown, who died on Valentine's Day in 1948. And he was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1949. And I've talked about 49 and 45 and why they go together and why they're significant. So 49, and he dies on Valentine's Day. He was the pitcher. Um, he was in a farm accident when he was a kid, and he actually only has eight fingers. <laughs> so there's an eight even. Mordecai Brown was even mentioned in the Simpsons episode, Homer at the Bat. And it was, it was on February 20th, 1992, is when this episode came out. So 23 years ago... Um, this episode came out. Michael Jordan, 23, uh, 220. It was episode number 52. Michael Jordan is 52 years old. 
I mean, uh, whatever. I'm not going to go into detail. I mean, this doesn't have to be that significant, but so this guy died in 1948. This next guy, he died at age 48. Uh, let's see, Johnny Evers. Uh, uh, I thought that said March 29th before, but so that would have been 88th day of the year. But anyway, the other guy, there's only, what, one, two, three, four people on here? Joe Tinker is the last one here. And he died in 1948 as well. And he died on his birthday, July 27th. So he's born July 27th, and he died July 27th of 48. So three of them, four uh, Hall of Famers there. Uh, the one guy died at 48, and two of them died in 48. Anyway, um, I'm going to move on now. So what I, what I thought the most interesting thing was, was that I looked through the World Series then. So this is the last time they won, but they've been to the World Series. One, two, three, four, five, six seven more times and the last time they went to the world series but they didn't win was in 1945 and i talked about 45 being valentine's day all kinds of significant things with valentine's day in 49 or 49 and 45 so anyway the cubs were up uh two games to one after game three in the series and then the tigers came back and what are they they won two then the cubs won and then the Cubs lost game seven. But if you read up here, this is where it's just super interesting to me. And it says, the curse of the Billy Goat originated in this series before the start of game four. As of 2014, this is the last appearance for the Chicago Cubs in the Fall Classic. Having last won the series in 1908, the Cubs own dubious records of both the longest league pennant drought and the longest World Series World Series drought in history. So let's click on the curse of the Billy Goat. The curse of the Billy Goat was supposedly placed on the Chicago Cubs in 1945 when the Billy Goat Tavern owner Billy Cianis was asked to leave the World Series game against the Detroit Tigers at the Cubs at the game four, basically. He had to leave because his pet goat, Odor, was uh, bothering other fans. Now, one, don't you think of I Pet Goat 2, right when you think of Pet Goat? And then 1945. Well, let's click on the, the guy who owned the goat. Okay, so he died October 22nd, 1970. October 22nd is 115 days before Valentine's Day. So that's 11-5, which just is a Back to the Future reference again. Remember, remember, the 5th of November, 115. Um, anyway, this guy bought a, a bar in early 1934. It says two months after the repeal of Prohibition, which Prohibition was December 5th, 1933. So two months later, it would be February 5th. It doesn't say the exact date, but it would be in February. So right around Valentine's Day, for one. But he bought the Lincoln Tavern, a bar across the street from Chicago Stadium. That summer, a baby goat fell off the back of the truck and into the street, and he nursed it back to health. And named it Murphy. Murphy, of all names. Um, you have, like, Mephisto and uh, the demon or whatever, the from Faust or whatever, the devil or whatever it is. Murphy, that's another name for the devil or whatever. That's craziness. But anyway, I mean, it could just be Murphy because it's, uh, like, Chicago and, like, an Irish town or whatever. Um, but he renamed the goat after... Whatever, he renamed it after uh, he got kicked out of the game or whatever, I think. Oh, yeah, I also wanted to point out 1970 is 44 years ago, and on October 22nd, it will be 45 years ago. But anyway, he w got tickets to the game, the World Series game, on October 6, 1945. And then in the fourth inning, uh, he, he brought his goat in because he bought two tickets, one for him and one for his goat. And then the fourth inning... Uh, that he was totally because of the goat stunk so bad or whatever. And then, according to the believers of the curse, he was enraged, and uh, he cursed the Cubs and that they would never win the World Series ever again or whatever. And they haven't won ever since then. But 
Um, it says the curse was subs- subsequently lifted in public on several occasions, first by Sianus himself in 1969. 45 years ago, he lifted the curse, and then he died in 1970, which will be 45 years ago this year. But um, So he lifted the curse, and then they still haven't won. Okay, so what I was talking about, this was his pet goat, and it, it was all surrounded. It was 1945. He lifted the curse 45 years ago. They still haven't won. All kinds of 45 references. And then it was, um, he got kicked out because of his pet goat. So if most of you, if people haven't seen this movie, or this little short, it's basically a movie, or it's short, that has all kinds of predictive things in it. And they've, they used it basically to like show you the future or something, what they're going to do next. And check this out here. So it's called I Pet Goat 2. Which also, if you add up I Pet Go 2, it comes to 111. Okay, just something to point out really quick right here. We got the evil, which is love backwards. What I talked about, it's the mirror of love, and love adds up to 54, so backwards, or the mirror, would be 45. And I also want to point out, it's supposed to say evolution, uh, and look, there's hearts, and then there's another heart right here. So you know it's about Valentine's Day and the false love, right? But look at the letters that are missing. It's a U, I, and O. U is 21. I is 9, so that is 30. And O is 15, 45. So the letters that are missing add up to 45 even. Now here in a second, he, he twists around and he turns into Obama. And look at it, the time when he turns into Obama here. Well, it's just barely, you can barely tell. It's at 104. It's like right in between 104 and 105. I had it stopped where it was on him at 104 before. But 104 is 10-4, and we know Obama is the 88th president. He's the 44th president, but he's the president when they started busting out these 88s like crazy. Um, also interesting is that he winks here. At 106, he winks. And the curse of the billy goat, it happened on October 6th, 1945. 10 6, 106. And then Obama winks here. Okay. Just want to keep watching for a little bit longer here. So Emily Parker there, she drops this apple. And we'll, it splits and then it grows into, I'm not sure what type of flower that is, but it's a flower which goes with Valentine's Day. And then Obama gets freaked out and sweats or whatever. And then this building collapses right here. So I don't, I mean, I don't know. Other people have decoded other things in this movie. So uh, this is in the very beginning too. So it's kind of weird that it's just now recently coming up or whatever. But uh, I don't know if a building's going to fall, if that's what they're signifying, or if that's com- something completely different. But it definitely goes along with the Valentine's Day theme that I've noticed like multiple times here. Oh, yeah, and I, I don't know if I said it or not, but uh, so another reason, he got kicked out in game four in the fourth inning. Uh, so if he got kicked out in the fourth inning, that means there's five innings left, so another 45. <laughs> 